Cirque du Soleil. Ladies and gentlemen, Saldi Banco. presentation of Journeys. This time we're going behind the scenes with Canada's world famous circus troupe Cirque du Soleil. Now it's one thing to buy a ticket and be swept away by the Cirque performance, but it's even more thrilling to go backstage and meet the people who make Cirque du Soleil work. The people who've made it so popular and now such big business. You know, sometimes what we like to do on Journeys is slip a little science into the story without you even really knowing it. Just to prove a point, I guess, that science is everywhere. It's not about labs, it's about life. Well, this time it was easy. You're going to be so captivated by the people you meet, you're not going to want to think about it in terms of engineering or medicine or physiology or kinesiology or even psychology. But never mind, because we want you to learn about the people. So, sit back, get yourself some popcorn, relax. We're going to watch the rest of the show. Then we're going to meet the people behind the masks. They call themselves merchants of happiness. Their specialty is thrills, theatrics, and fantasy. In the summer of 1984, Cirque du Soleil was conceived by street performers. They did 50 shows that summer, and when it was all over, they had rave reviews and a $20,000 debt. Here, as they dazzle crowds with their third North American tour, Sultan Banco, they're a multi-million dollar, world-renowned creative empire. Their success is a testament to creativity, originality, and teamwork. They've essentially resurrected medieval circus and introduced it to 20th century theatrics and music and lights. The secret to the success of a small group of street performers is the way everyone works together as a team. Ideas bubble and evolve and escalate to finally conceive this. Sultan Banco will go on to perform 250 shows in Japan. Meanwhile, here in a converted locomotive warehouse northeast of downtown Montreal, a brand new show is taking shape. 75 workers have been pulling double shifts for the past three months to get the set ready. It's the most complicated stage they've ever built. That's because, once again, Cirque du Soleil is trying something that's never been done before. As I wandered around behind the scenes, I was struck by the sheer enormity of the set and the number of people working on separate tasks to bring the whole thing together. 
This is really neat because it's part of a dome that they're making for the new show. It's going to go up over the whole stage. I'm looking for Lynn Heward and all of this. She's going to tell us a lot more about what's going on. If I can find her. Because of its reputation, each Cirque du Soleil show has to outdo the one before to keep audiences coming back. There's already been talk about Cirque losing its edge. People say that corporate success will destroy its creative spontaneity. Well, after finding Lynn Heward, Cirque's director of Creation Studio, she began to convince me that the rumors couldn't be more wrong. Lynn is showing me the physical core of the new show, the set for Cirque's new wild idea called the Fast Track. The big challenge for set designers and builders is hiding the Fast Track until it's revealed during the show. This is so neat to see the Fast Track set before it's all constructed so you know what's gone into it. What you see here actually is the roll top that covers the Fast Track or keeps it hidden from the spectators right. until the moment in the show where we want to expose it. So it's, it's like a huge roll top desk? Sort like of a huge that? roll top desk or a, a rolling uh, walkway in an airport uh, that just rolls along. A lot of the kids have said, hey, we'd like to tumble on this while it's moving. While it's moving? I don't think we will, but they'd like to try it. This is the fast track, and this is how it works. Fast tracks aren't new, but intersecting them is. Basically, this is two intersecting trampolines, six feet wide and 45 feet long. So you had to be the guinea pig? I, well, I had to be the guinea pig because I was always interested to find out what work had been done overnight. Right. And one day I came in and I jumped across, I regularly jump across like this, and I touched the ground and I said, oops, I think the springs aren't working today. Oh my God. As a former That's gymnast and coach of the National Women's Gymnastics Team, Lynn's experience was invaluable in making the idea work. As I said, it's never been tried before and there were countless engineering problems. This was one of them. They had a hard time finding a way to support the center without risking the safety of the acrobats. When we get to the center portion here where the two tracks cross over, we can't afford to have a metal bar running here because each time an artist tumbles, the length oh, of his okay. back spring or front spring will be slightly different. Right. And therefore, we can't have him landing accidentally oh, on a metal, metal bar. bar. Oh, yeah. So okay. the question was, how do we support the center? Right. And if you look here, this is our, our big secret. Okay. We've taken <laughs> surgical, <laughs> surgical tubing. And we tried three or four different things before we came up with this one. And the idea with the surgical tubing was to replicate as close as possible, as closely as possible, the actual spring of the fast track with wow. the springs with the surgical tubing. And then Rather the than giving up on the concept, the team racked their brains for the best scientific method of making it work. Okay. This is the enthusiasm and perseverance that Lynn loves about Cirque du Soleil. So when the idea first came out, did people go, oh my God, you've got to be kidding, that's crazy. Um, I think that happens a lot here, but it, the circus would only be where it is today if somebody went beyond that oh my God phase <laughs> and said, we're going to try this right. and come hell or high water. And uh, that's what I, I guess appreciate most about working here is that people have not only the insight to create, but to make the creation work. Souk de Soleil has drawn the best performers from Canada, Mongolia, Russia, China, and the United States for their new show. They speak different languages and come from completely different lifestyles. Yet they not only learn to get along, they harmonize to create one of the most exciting circus events anywhere. I kept thinking entire countries could take a lesson from the circus. Russian trampoline champion Yuri Samsonov is perfecting his skill on the Russian bar, another apparatus they'll use in the new show. Acrobatic excellence has to be just second nature for a Cirque performer because there's so much more than that involved in each show. Alexandra Moisev was recruited as a Russian bar coach. He's probably the best in the world. The creative process has evolved since then to include Alexandra in the show as well. Yeah, Rumor has it he'll do a flip Thank off you. the Russian bar while on stilts and while holding another acrobat. 
Hard to believe when what Yuri is doing is exciting enough. We're looking at this being not a pure tumbling number in the traditional sense, mm -hmm. where people just do tricks line after line. Right. We want it to be a uh, it's, it's a different surface. We want people to dance on it. Mm -hmm. so Boris sure Rakovsky is the head trainer. He came to Cirque du Soleil from Calgary after a long career training gymnasts. As we headed to the Russian bar practice, he told me that a Cirque acrobat is unique. They're trained here in dance, in martial arts, in percussion, in mime, in drama. All these skills contribute to forming a well-rounded Cirque artist, because ultimately they have to combine those acrobatic stunts with acting and dance. And that's not just difficult, it can be dangerous. In a lot of the ways, they're superb material for the dance instructors. They love it. They, they're very disciplined, they learn very well. It's, uh, it's not a concern at all. In some ways, they're terrific students. But one element that very often you run into is that an acrobat getting ready and focused for a very difficult trick has to deal with an element of perhaps fear occasionally, but definitely risk. During the show, each artist plays a role, a character. So performers like Alistair here not only complete that flip off the Russian bar in a way that would give you a 9.9 .9 from the Russian judge, but they have to do it while focusing on their character. That's what attracted Boris from gymnastics to Cirque du Soleil. He loves the atmosphere of risk and the people it attracts. Right. What brought you here? What excites you about this that brought you here? I love circus. Uh, I love circus with no animals. I love uh, that concept of combining the theater with circus, so basically using the, the acrobatics as a medium to make a statement and, and to entertain. Um, it's just, uh, from a circus perspective, this is perhaps the only company in the world that creates. Mm -hmm. Creates its numbers, creates uh, no, no, the production, yeah. and... Uh, How is it rewarding? It's rewarding because you see the progress in a very, very rapid uh, time frame. That's one thing. The other thing is that uh, you feel that you're giving people a lot more than simply an ability to go and compete successfully. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, for the first time, Yuri is challenging Alistair. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> we are ready. Okay. This is the creative process Boris is talking about. Every day the routines evolve. They're not just perfected as in competitive gymnastics. Ideas spark back and forth and escalate as these artists strive to make the impossible work. This is the... Uh a slight change in the routine that mm -hmm. we're making right now, this would become an element for the finale. Oh, I see. After a morning of working on gymnastics routines, everyone spends some time in Debbie Brown's choreography workshop. This is where music and dance are introduced to acrobatics. The artists learn to feel the music and make dance a part of their routine. You have to be willing to risk. The ultimate goal is to produce artists, acrobatic artists. Is that what is so unique about the Cirque du Soleil in general, is that combination? I would say it's one of the things that makes Cirque du Soleil unique. It's this harmonious relationship between acrobatics, athletics, and artistry. Franco Dragon, who is the artistic director, and Debbie Brown, who is the choreographer, are both very sensitive to the fact that these people have come from different backgrounds, and therefore they really worked to watch them in one of their sessions. They really worked to dig deep in the artist to bring out their individual personality, their individual movement habits, etc., and to create new ones. I'm all good. I'm ready to die. <laughs> The difficult part is digging deep enough and exposing that artistic 
aesthetic portion of the personality and it's innate in all of us some of us more than others mm -hmm. we want artists who want to give everything to the artistic director that want to give everything to the core uh, to the choreographer ah, that want ball. to give yes. everything to their coach just one thing Alex I wonder if uh, two girls first Yes. Um, Debbie Brown joined Cirque du Soleil in 1987 after sneaking into a performance in Vancouver and deciding the troupe needed a choreographer. Her. Here she's working with Alexandra and the artists, but she also works with Boris and with Lynn and with the costume designers and with the composer. After Debbie that, loves that process, unique to Cirque, that, where an idea takes on its own form as everyone adds their thoughts. And single barrel. First, sing first synchro. Single. Okay. Swing time. Debbie was a gymnast for 13 years and therefore says she speaks the same physical language as the performers. Well, it's a good thing with everyone collaborating in different spoken languages. I don't know how they understood anything. If I play music. No. Are we marking? Are we marking? Well, it, this is marking, right? Like you're I enjoy working in a world where there's um, collaboration, composer and laughter, and comedy, and clown work, theater work. I enjoy the, all the worlds together. That's neat because it, it could be very difficult as well. I mean, you saying that you enjoy it, I'm sure there are times when those different worlds collide when they don't agree on how to do something. Yes, there is. And also when different personalities collide, there's many different personalities inside of a circus. It's I've been working yes, often with well, dancers, yes. and dancers is a very homogeneous no. group. Mm -hmm. They Speak come from the world of dance, and this is what they do, and they all understand the mentality of dance. Where here you have different languages, people from different backgrounds, for instance. Some come from traditional circus, some come from competition. And you have moments, it, it tests your patience. You, you have to have patience to work here. It sounds so difficult. Why does it work so well? Um, collaboration, teamwork, patience. It's creativity. getting beyond. Yeah, yeah. It's creativity, originality, and risk. Neat. A Cirque artist has to be willing to live with physical risk, too, and physical pain. Ontario native Michael Rosenberger used to be in competitive gymnastics, so injury is a familiar tune. Um, I fell while doing a skill on the fast track. Okay. Fell off the fast track onto no, the No, it was a bad landing. I sort of landed with this leg. Jacinthe Lemieux is the on-site physiotherapist. Is that Michael has a ligament sprain that's pretty much typical of the injuries she treats. Unlike competitive gymnastics where athletes train and compete and rest, Cirque artists rehearse about six hours a day, then they go on tour for at least two years. So the physical pounding is never really over. The result is overuse injuries like strained muscles, sprained ligaments, or tendonitis. So what do you have to do now? Right now he's doing pretty well. Uh, we're pretty much in the later stage of, uh, of the rehabilitation where we're trying to uh, focus more on uh, increasing the strength, increasing his proprioception, his balance, mm -hmm. and uh, doing more sport specific uh, type of exercise mm -hmm. so that he can come back to his uh, normal regular time. Do you get injured very often, Michael? I mean, not you specifically, but does Are there do acrobats get injured often? Um, they were saying that on average, there's usually about four artists who have some minor injury at any given time. Is that right? And is it just because of the continuous stress? I think so. On the yeah, strain? you're yeah. always working acrobatic skills throughout all performances and training as well. So mm -hmm. there's bound to be some mm -hmm. little thing wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, looking for uh, Danielle and Jean-Luc, and they're supposed to be warming up. Okay, because of busy schedules, I hadn't had much of a chance to talk to the artists. But Danielle Rodden-Kirchen and Jean-Luc Martin agreed to come in early so we could talk. I found them, and they're waiting for us. This is um, Cirque du Soleil's new warehouse. Everything's under one big, huge roof, which is a real relief. Because it used to be that they were scattered all over the city. Oh, do that again. <laughs> that looked really good.
Louisiana. Jean-Luc Martin is from Louisiana. Wow. He used to be a rock climber, then he ran away to the circus. He did some juggling and a bit of flying trapeze. Danielle Rodenkirchen is from Ontario. She used to be in competitive gymnastics and finds Cirque less physically demanding. But it's very emotionally demanding. Most Cirque artists are together 24 hours a day. They practice together, eat together, share co-ed washrooms and dressing rooms, and many live in the same hotel. That's enough to cause a small riot, in my experience, but here it nurtures an intense work environment. Um, uh, and now it's, it's starting to, to become a family as we work with the directors, and, and because we see each other, um, uh, you know, our director says stripped, you know, our personalities that, that um, uh, we're raw. So we see everything about each other. We see the bad moods, the good moods, the happy moments, the sad moments. And if there's a problem, then, then um, everyone's pretty open to speak about it. But when I think of family, I mean, family isn't always a good thing. There's conflict and conflict resolution and that sort of thing. And I imagine with such performers and everybody being top-notch that there's probably a bit of conflict in the way I want to do it this way. Well, no, I think it's better if you do it oh, this yeah. way. <laughs> it's <kind of> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially with language, too, you know. It's, it's some people, like there's Russian, Mongolian, English, French, uh, Chinese. Uh, so if, if someone has an idea, it's so difficult for them to, to put it on the table if they don't speak the language. Oh. So it's... And it's difficult for us when we're trying to understand them, and so it's you have to have lots of patience. It builds character. Yeah. When when the unsynchronized routine is done, he thinks that maybe the guys will even stay in the bar while something else is taking place. It, How long it's have you been that I've been for about three years off and on, four years off and on. Really? So. So you like it? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, this is my first experience of a creation uh, of a show. Yes. So and and it's wonderful. You have to work with uh, Franco and, and uh, Debbie Brown. And it's and see things evolve. Yeah, and, especially yeah. See, see ourselves evolve. You know, see the costumes come on, the mask. Uh, you know, we're, every day it's something new. And as time gets closer and closer to the opening, it's. <laughs> Are you starting to feel jitters now? That I was eight, eight weeks away, right? Yeah. Oh, not, not yet. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you must have jitters. Stretch. Come back inside. Among Cirque artists, this man is practically God. I've never seen such reverence or fear as I saw for Franco Dragon. When Journeys continues, we'll meet him in part two of Cirque du Soleil, Behind the Masks. So cool. All of these are, are um, heads of the acrobats that actually work here. And the neat thing is they take a mold of the person's head. So say if they're working in Japan or something, they can, uh, and they have trouble with their mask, they just send back here for a mask. Anyway, we're looking for Eve. He is the director of the design workshop. We're on the second floor of Cirque du Soleil's production Hello. studio Hi. warehouse. How are you? Yves Fournier is supervising mask and costume fight. creation for the new show. So fascinating. So are all of the acrobats going to be masked for the new show? Most of them. All the acrobats are going to have their head uh, made out of plaster because uh, we use the head to make masks, to make hats, to make uh, makeup even. Right. And uh, most of the, the house acrobats are going to have these uh, masks, their personal mask. Right. So it's custom made, very fitted on their own head. Wow. Now isn't that a, if I was an acrobat and sort of flipping around on, an, on a high wire in an acrobatic bar, I'd be a little concerned being restricted by a mask, is it? You won't, you won't be because as the the, the sculpture is done on your own head. This is uh, one of the acrobat head. Mm -hmm. The sculpture, as they are doing, is made on the head, so it fits perfectly. 
on the face, the eyes are going to be perfectly at the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, the mouth will be able to open as we can see here. Wow. So they, they'll be able to sing, oh to, to act uh, or do uh, anything. Right. So, so it, what is it made of? Is it really soft? This is latex uh -huh. inside, uh -huh. uh, outside, and the inside here, it's uh, kind of plastic. Wow. Now, when you sweat like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear it for a while. Yeah. I mean, it's for a short, a short uh, time. Oh, is it? And then they take off the mask? Yeah. yeah. And they it's have one of the characters of the show. So they won't be wearing it for two hours and a half. No, no, no. Oh, never. okay. All right. Maybe, I mean, 20 minutes. Right. So seeing is not a problem, even your peripheral vision, everything will be just perfect. No, because it's perfectly fitted. Wow. Can you see here? The eyes is perfectly open mm -hmm. according to the real eyes mm -hmm. of the acrobat. Oh, of so there's no way to be bothered by this. We would like to have some cover with letters. So oh. we will try. We never did it before. The design workshop will make 20 masks, most made of plastic inside and latex outside. But experimenting with this leather would give the characters a softer, wrinkled look. Wrinkled. Mm, all right. So all the characters are looking very The old. name of the character is Old Birds. Oh, really? So it has to look a little wrinkled. Uh -huh. We'll see the sketches later. So there is some kind of theme then to this new show. Mm. There's a, something that specific you're working on. Yes, yes. There's right. different types. I had been costume. trying for days to find out about the theme of the new show, and I'd been told everything from, well, Our we don't have one, not, to, uh, I don't know. Yes. So for Eve right. to admit so to a theme to and to tell me the characters were old birds and that he'd show me sketches of the costumes later, felt like a bit of a breakthrough. The masks are a we'll stimulus for Cirque artists. They help them move like into character to feel the part they'll soon have to play. To Ever wear a mask like on birds. Halloween? But as soon as I you mean, put it on, you feel different. Style. You run around acting like the character, right? Well, it's the same sort of thing here. Oh, it's, just it's a beautiful. suggestion of a bird. Mm -hmm. yes. Knowing the theme of the new show now puts the dance movements we saw in Debbie's choreography class in a new context. The artists are experimenting with bird-like movement, making it part of their acrobatic routine. They have to feel as comfortable with music and dance as they do with acrobatics. The two have to become inseparable for the show. Meanwhile, the design studio continues to shape the physical dimensions of the characters. See, this one is print, this one is right. another color. This is so a, this is your specification, you can just buy this fabric because yeah. you like it, you made it that way. Yeah. We create the material. Even 70 here, people yeah. in this workshop will material create costumes for 200 different characters. But this one there was sort of a calm excitement in this room, like I something I big was about I to happen. Know. Maybe it was the calm before the storm of costume fittings and opening night rips and missing buttons. You know, it's funny, just being here, the atmosphere is so different from being down on the floor where the acrobats are training. It's more quiet now, but uh, it will be, uh, soon it will be more lively. Yeah, well, but I'm thinking that the, the costumes and the fabrics must play such a, an important role in the acrobats changing from acrobat to, to actor or performer. Yes, of course, when you rehearse with a regular tight or a sweatshirt and then you put on a costume, it's all the difference in the world. Right. So the artists are all saying the same. They cannot find their character without having their costume. So here we have... Four weeks before opening sketch, night, the artists start the full dress rehearsal. That, that helps them get the into the their character, but more more importantly, it lets them practice this very the difficult moves while getting used to a one. brand new aerodynamic feeling. As you can see, there's a lot of padding at the breast, at the hips, mm -hmm. so we cannot use regular padding because they are acrobats, so they, they won't be able to move. Right. So what we decide this year <laughs> is to make kind of basket, period basket made of plastic wire, so it's empty inside. Oh, okay. So they can move uh -huh. and it will always always follow the body. Mm -hmm. So it won't interrupt the uh, the acrobatic movement. 
Not, it won't. Even, I mean, because it's Not even. Not that much. A, a little bit, though. I guess <laughs> if you're flipping around. But, I mean, the choreographer and the acrobat uh, people have to work with it. I mean, making character like this, uh, of course, it's a corset. Of course, it's padding. We, they have to develop a certain technique mm -hmm. to work with it. Mm -hmm. Mark. Okay, okay, okay. 15-year-old okay. Jean-Vierve Soucy will execute okay. that move okay. wearing full costume. Okay. In fact, Alexandra Moisiev, the Russian bar coach, is working on a spectacular move that will put he and Jean-Vierve on the bar together. Look at me. What is it? Huh? Yes. Okay? You can see how critical it is that the designer understand the acrobat's routine. This is so neat. They've only been in this warehouse for like a couple of months and everybody's got their names on it. It's all personalized. And back here it looks like, it sort of looks like a Broadway theater. We're finding people who are putting their makeup on for the, the mask workshop. So. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? Around 3.30 <laughs> every day, the artists prepare for Franco Dragon's theater so workshop. Franco is the director, and his workshop and is feared uh, and revered among the artists. <laughs> Franco's class forces everyone to stretch beyond athletic movement, Dave beyond Dave dance says. movement. Through different kinds bar. of exercises, Franco probes the personality of each artist. Right. He urges each one to like dig Franco? deep inside and explore the character they can be. And and to expose that character in front of everyone. The artists love this time, but there was a tension you could almost touch in this room as they put on white face mask and joked and wondered what to expect from Franco this time. Gymnast Danielle Roddenkirchen says she's never had such a challenge. It's a lot of work. Definitely lots of times you have to focus and concentrate on what he's telling you. He always gets mad. Yes. It's only happened to us a few times. But it's fun. So what sorts of what sorts of things does it get you to do there? Anything imaginable. Like what? Just an example. Sometimes we'll just walk back and forth. Yeah. And sometimes we'll make us do just crazy, crazy body positions. Yeah. So do you really have to sort of With these exercises, Franco encourages the artist to examine how the movement makes them feel, yeah. Yeah. to explore their potential as an artist, <laughs> melding athletics and theater, discovering so what evolves. White face for Franco's workshop. White face, red lips, red. black lips. Why? <laughs> your expression. Yeah, like yeah. your lips, your eyebrows, right. your eyes. Right. Does it also uh, uh, take away your personal identity sort of thing? Thank you. Yeah, because everyone kind of looks the same. Right. Are you going to be in this workshop too today? Yep. Yeah. Just, just having a, a break. A <laughs> snap. Uh, how long have you been with Sir? This? 43-year-old Oleg Kantamirov is a stuntman, acrobat, magician, oh, yeah. flyer, and master of karate. Yes, Why? Because I fall, <laughs> and Moscow Circus finished my career. And uh, Circus Soleil, this mix, work Circus in same Moscow and theater. Uh -huh. It's very good for myself because I opening my new. I like movie, like theater. Mm -hmm. This is the same movie, theater, and, and, the and circus. Right. Yeah, this is very good for me. I think all of us want to be performers of some sort and uh, get to see what it's actually like being in front of people and finding out what you actually will do yes. when, when you're in front of a Greg Curtis is a champion gymnast from New York. Performer in you. It's everything because in like I was a gymnast and it was very clear cut what I had to do. There was rules and, and guidelines set down that were pretty strict. And there's no there's no real rules. One thing is becoming very clear to me as I watch from the sidelines. These classes reveal how hard the acrobats work on their journey toward becoming artists. As they focus on incorporating dance and acting and music 
into athletic movement, you can feel their intensity and their drive. to take someone who's uh, so concentrated on acrobatics and make them a performer? It's a lot of work yeah. and a lot of communication, a lot of explanation, mm -hmm. a lot of research. I don't come with a, a, um, an idea in my mind. I come with my eyes open and I try really to, to use the potential of each people. For me, um, some actors, some acrobatic uh, people, they have good uh, intention, right intention. But the look, the image of their body doesn't fit with the intention they have. Right. So the, uh, I work on the image and then slowly I build an image coming from them and then slowly they understand what they, they can look with their body. Mm -hmm. I want to work with the specificity of each people. That must be very difficult because you've got a room full of different personalities. Yeah. Italian director Franco Dragon was quick ushered in here by his personal assistant who then paced outside. Franco was treated with reverence. To talk to him you have to go through three people. So when I finally sat down with him, I was surprised at his candor. Mm -hmm. To watch what happened and not project my own vision. They, I, have, I, used, I used to say I have no idea. I just observe, mm -hmm. and when I catch something, oh, I try to to use it and to give back to to the artist. So for this upcoming show, are you Franco has a special a gift for finding an artist's and inner strength and then nurturing it. That sort of style is reflected in the overall theme of the show too. The idea for the new show started with his observations about the inner strength of humankind, and it evolved from there. Are in a um, um, transition now. We are living. A transition period that we don't understand mm -hmm. we maybe we will understand this in a few years mm -hmm. well, our, our children will understand this and I compare this period with the Middle Age which was the uh, obscure period we say in French obscurantism mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. and uh, when we thought we think now about Middle Age we we think that the Middle Age was a bad period but a lot of new thing happened in the Middle Age, right. but that people only understand later in the Renaissance mm -hmm. period. And it's of course um, an hypothesis mm -hmm. that today we are in a Middle Age period, a transition period that we don't understand what will happen, but maybe in a few years we will understand. So the theme of the show is the mutation. One thing, baby, she does. She, they do the same thing, but now they know the step, but they have to think to the end. Okay. Only think ends. What they they do? Only think, not uh, the move. Not fix, not move. Only think, also the end. Just be aware of your hands, where they are. For instance, what you do, Danielle? Okay, she, she does something inconscient. Okay, just unconscious. Yeah, and it will give an image. The source of the theme for the new show, Allegria, is power. The theme is transition, evolution, and rebirth. The metaphor is old nostalgic birds. As I watched Franco's practice, all of that began to take shape. Don't forget this. The artist repeatedly told me that Franco has a gift for inspiring their inner talent. It's been his style for years. Rather than seeing the theatrical weaknesses of non-actors, he uses their lack of training as a strength. Okay. I could literally see that rhythm. happening in front of me. Circle. Okay. Music. We try to find this rhythm. And also the Each artist sprang okay. to life under Franco's piercing gaze. It was as though they were giving everything inside to Franco to impress yeah. or at least to please him. And you have to watch. Open the eyes. <laughs> I'll call the music. We watch. Don't be co become cold because we will go on. Watch her. I also saw exactly what Franco had talked about earlier. Some artists seemed less graceful or fluid than others. 
As I watched, I wondered how Franco could possibly help the more awkward ones attain the elegance of Emily Terrien. Well, he didn't. He used the awkward movements, even enhanced them, to help each artist develop a personal character. So Emily may be a graceful crane, but Oleg, well, I see Oleg as a strong, proud rooster. Why do you do this? Why do you love this? Uh, I, it's a usual answer. I could not do another thing, but yeah. uh, I do this because uh, I am lazy. No. So uh, lazy, I would completely disagree with you because I think it's it's an ongoing and difficult process to be drawing people out and creating a, yeah. a theme that you do. A lazy, it's a it's an answer, <laughs> only an answer. But I think there is a lot of people in the world who. Uh, ask themselves what I can do in this world mm -hmm. during my life. And I think the best way to change the world is to start around us. And so I, what I like very much in this work is that I work with people and I talk with people. Because also uh, I don't believe in the shows or play and everything that they want to deliver a message. Mm -hmm. The message for me is not what uh, you want to deliver. Or you, it's not a demonstration. The way they are together, the way we are together, the way we share, the way we discuss, it's very important. It, it's the real message of the show. It's the real things that we can share with the audience. The, the audience will feel this kind of spirit. Yes. So I like it very much because I can see the eyes of the people. I can see how they are sometimes sad, angry, or sometimes they wish, they hope. Michael, it's to be with people, I think. That's why I like it. have been focusing on the evolution of the Cirque performer from acrobat to artist. A different kind of evolution has been going on here. Look at this stage. Do you remember those huge pieces were on the ground a while ago? And now just, just a few short weeks later they've all been welded together to create the illusion of a cathedral in here. Do you hear that? That is the sound of applause. It's not really, it's rain, but I'm sure that's what it must sound like up here. Anyway, this is Cirque's trade secret. A true feat of the science of engineering. At a special moment during the show, this whole floor will just open up, and then just about anything can happen. Attention, fast track! The fast track has come a long way since Lynn Heward first showed it to us. In fact, it feels like so many things in just a few short weeks have come together in a harmonious way. The set, the choreography, the artists themselves. The atmosphere here is now charged with electric expectation. As the technicians prepare for dress rehearsals, they're well aware there can be no technical failures. The performance must be flawless for this final step in the evolution toward Allegria. This is where the mask meets the costume, meets the artist, meets the stage. All the elements meld together, and the result is pure magic. When you finally got into your costume, what did that feel like? It was like we finally took the step and we we're ready to do the show. That's when everything started coming together and you just totally went in it because we had lights and maybe no audience, but everyone was watching. So. What did that feel like, like inside? How it was exciting that we're, that we're finally here after all the months we've been practicing. Okay, let's try Alistair Gregg. That means for today we're doing a third one. I think a third one might be a little too much, but the idea of the cannon is right, so for today it's okay. I'm just starting to, to believe in myself as the character, as the person behind the makeup, um, which is normal. It's, it's just, some people takes a year, some people it takes a week, some people a day, so me it takes... <laughs> How long is it? What do you mean? Believe um, in yourself. Uh, believe in your character. Cute. Da -da 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 
again. Sometimes with the costume it's a little bit restricting, but then again, artistically, it adds so much more. Does it become Great. part of you, or are you always, are you always a little bit separate from that costume? Um, I think you're always a little bit separate from the costume, but as soon as you put the costume on, if, like, we have several costumes, and as soon as I put the fast track costume on, you get sort of into the fast track mode, you know, I have the costume done now, and, and we're gonna go do fast track and do the performance. So now, stop. Sergey, are you after Genevieve now? Why don't I show you around back here while everyone is still rehearsing? Now, this is called the artistic tent. Through that way is a stage, that's where everyone's rehearsing. Now, several weeks before Cirque actually starts the performance, they move into this on the road setup. That's to help the performers get used to that feeling because they're going to be on the road for more than two years. So this is actually a big tent. That way is the performance tent. And off this tent are several tractor trailers for, for different things. We've got one, two, three dressing rooms. Now you need that many. You've got more than 40 international performers and they all need some elbow room while they're putting on their mask and costume. Oh, now, masks and costumes. We have seen the evolution of the performers, then we see, we've seen the evolution of the stage. You should see the masks. Remember when they were the clay masks on the busts? And remember the costumes, they were just on the bulletin board? Look at this. This is just one of the finished costumes now, just one. And we're going to go talk to Eve about the masks. Eve! Not only has there been an astounding transformation in the masks, things are already starting to fall off from the rigors of dress rehearsal. Uh, some, some of the masks have been uh, delivered on the, on, uh, on the show and uh, we now found that something happened with, as this hat hasn't been uh, fixed well. Uh, either the necklace hasn't been done, so we have to bring it everything. We have to bring everything uh, at uh, the custom shop. Emery, who is in charge of the custom during the show, during the tour, uh, take care of all these uh, things. Yeah, when they get uh, well with 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 the show, like they're gonna lose feathers and stuff, so we replace them to make them uh, uh, look always like new. So when they start to uh, like the painting or like the feather, they will fall or the the pearls. We just put it back, so they, we want they always look like new. That's why so many work because we trying on the, the, the scene now and we see all the technical problem with the costume we have to uh, fix. It's, so time, it's time when we are still in Montreal because it's yeah. easy for him to send it back uh, to the costume yeah. departments. Because as you can see here, we can repair a costume but it's not the place to remake another one or make a big uh, correction as uh, this these, uh, needs to be done. How long do we have? Michael, you know? For me, it's like they like, use it for school. Ten minutes. Smell. Ten minutes? Yeah, I know, I don't. The biggest problem right now seems to be the lack of time between costume changes. It's causing a fair bit of tension back here. You know, Angel? Bird? Chicken. Pardon me, Angel. Chicken. Are you bird guy? I'm a bird guy. When everyone's running around getting last minute fittings and uh, you hear people saying, hey, you're supposed to be on the stage and people are running oh, that on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going through people's minds? Um, we did all this work for costumes and when we got everything together on stage and in the costumes and everyone, you know, the whole stage laid out, we did a lot of work with Frank out. And uh, it was it was really interesting because uh, we f realized how far away we were from where we wanted to be, and even now we're still working to get to where we want to be. How's and, that? Well, the show always progresses. You know, it never stays the same. And you know, every day we'll we'll watch videos, and the artistic director Pasho, uh, you know, we'll watch the whole show and video, and he'll say, you, know, you need to be here, you need to be there, and try this. So we'll always do something new to try to try to shake up the stage to. Uh, just to keep it, you know, alive and more exciting. You can pick it up. Get it. Man, my shoes dry. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
our troupe has been very good. There hasn't been much tension between anybody, but relationships amongst the artists was, I think it was actually, it was made stronger during the rehearsal times because you're working so closely with everyone. Oh, okay. Working so closely with everyone and you know you have a show to put together as a team, not an individual. Mm -hmm. So you're interacting with everyone on stage. I'm relying and on everyone to do their yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. And backstage as well, you know, when things are changed, um, during that time we were putting the show together with rehearsals with Franco, there were so many changes every day. We all had a little notebook. We were keeping notes. Um, but sometimes you'd miss the notes and you'd have to ask one another, what was that last change in uh, the perch queue? <laughs> so we were all getting pretty close. I never thought that I would be covered up so much in a show <laughs> because there's, I only put makeup on for seven minutes of the whole show, uh, which is the ball loose number, and all the rest I'm in, I'm in bird because I'm in bird doing the, the what they call the fast track number, which I wasn't before, but I am now because it, the character works more. So as far as my own personal growth, which I feel fun and happy to do, and good to do, um, it, it would have to be behind the mask and the bird. <laughs> yeah. Because I. I, I I guess if I would take the mask off, it would be a lot harder because being behind the mask, it, it, it's different. You know, it's not that I'm worse at one or the other, but uh, I like doing mask work. It's, it's, it's fun. Um, you have to think about your your whole body as opposed to here. Would you? I mean, if if, if you have the makeup on your face, you're going to think about your whole body as well. But because you have the mask on, you you think about the mo movements more sharp. So we just have to say. But I was paying attention, so I don't know. Well, we'll find out in two minutes. How would you describe how you were feeling just before the actual opening night? It seemed rushed. It seemed um, last minute this, last minute that, running to get on stage. How are people feeling? Anxious and nervous, I'm sure. Especially, I know the first week when we're like, there's no way we can change into our costume for this number. How are we going to do it? And everyone's going, oh, it'll be no problem once you get used to it. And we're going, no, you don't understand. I'm going to be late for my act. But once we got into the flow, we realized, you know, when your nerves are there, calm down. It's easy. I have so much time now to get on stage. At first I was rushing, help me, help me. So nothing changed as far as nobody gave you more time or anything? It was just a matter no, yeah. of relaxing? Just finally getting into the swing of things. Right. That's great. Okay, well good luck. Thank you. Or should, are you supposed to say that? It's not break a leg though. Okay. It's good luck. It's good. good luck. Right <laughs> you know, I think what impresses me the most about the people of Cirque du Soleil is their drive. Their passion, their energy to do those endless, physically punishing routines on things like the fast track in the Russian bar. Well, now maybe it is more than that. I think it's their willingness to dig deep down inside themselves, expose all their vulnerabilities, and put their souls into their characters just to be the very best performer they can be. That is what makes Cirque du Soleil work. And that is what gets them beyond the language barriers and beyond the creative differences. And this, well, this is the payoff. This, according to Cirque performers, is what makes it all worthwhile. For Journeys, I'm Lauren Miller.